when I dive into the pool, nothing else matters. It's a moment of clarity. It's almost like you're flying. And we're off in the final of the 200-yard freestyle. It's been somewhat surreal to see my name pop up a lot. Earlier this morning, Leah Thomas had the fastest I've mostly time just tried to ignore a lot of the noise. People will say, oh, she just transitioned so she could win. Trans people don't transition for athletics. She's in good shape with a 500. We just want to be able to live our lives. For years, this room has served as a sanctuary for Leah Thomas. She's logged hundreds, even thousands of hours here. Some good, some not. All I was thinking was that I can't live like this anymore. You thought about quitting? It, yeah, it was a very tough time. Until now, she's kept her head down, quietly making history, the first openly transgender woman to become a Division I NCAA champion. Leah Thomas will capture the win. In the and igniting a fierce national debate about fairness in women's sports, transgender rights, and identity. Being trans is not a choice. I didn't have any other choice. Well, Leah Thomas grew up as a biological the boy. Domination. Sparking widespread outrage. Leah Thomas, one of the most controversial athletes in the country, is ready to talk. What makes you want to break your silence now? To respond to critics. Stop this woke insanity now. And to take on the question at the heart of it all. Is it fair to let trans women compete? Trans women very much can compete. It's not a threat to women's sports. The male biology, that advantage is built in, that's baked in. If this isn't stopped, this is the end to women's sports at a competitive level. Do you think it should come down to a choice between your sport or your gender identity? No, I don't want other trans people to face that, that choice. What's it like saying your name? Now that I am Leah now, it's really meaningful and it, it feels very authentic. In the midst of all of this spotlight on you, I can't imagine this is your comfort zone. It's not exactly. During the season, I would just ignore it. I wouldn't really read any of the articles that came out. I, I certainly wouldn't read any comments or, or things people had to say. Growing up, Leah says she was a happy child, but always felt there was a disconnect. I didn't feel like I was a boy. I was like, this isn't me, this isn't who I am. And how old were you when you first had that inkling? <sighs> I think seven or eight, and then again in like middle school. It wasn't until she arrived at the University of Pennsylvania that those feelings became impossible to ignore. Freshman year of college is when I delved into like reading the experiences of other trans women. At first there's immense relief where you're like, everything sort of makes sense. And then you start to think about having to come out to people, um, how they might react. I couldn't ignore it anymore and I had to finally and fully accept for myself that I am, I am trans. By sophomore year, Leah achieved her best rankings yet in the men's field, but mentally, things were worse than ever. I was extremely depressed. I was barely going to classes. I could really barely get out of bed. I said, I can't live like this anymore. You thought about quitting, swimming altogether. I, yeah, it was a very tough time. Why? I was scared of how my coaches and my teammates would react. I, I'm sure there are plenty of people who don't understand what you were going through who might say, well, why didn't you just stick it out one more year in the men's team? I wouldn't have been able to. I, I was very, very miserable. I struggled with uh, suicidal thoughts. Being trans is, is not a choice. I, I didn't have any other choice. By May of sophomore year, 2019, Leah started the medical part of her transition, hormone replacement therapy. When I started HRT, I had accepted that I probably wouldn't swim again and that my career was over. And then that summer I was feeling a lot better mentally and emotionally. I realized just how much the sport really means to me and 
I didn't want to, to give it up. That required facing her fears and coming out to her team. What did you say to them? Basically, like, I'm, I'm transgender. I'm not a man. I, I'm a woman. Once I, I've hit the NCA requirement, I'll be switching teams. And what was the reaction? In that moment, it was, it was a lot of support. How quickly, physiologically, did things change for you? They sort of start slowly at first. The quickest thing that happened is I lost muscle mass. and I became um, a lot weaker and a lot, a lot slower in the water. NCAA rules for transgender women had been in place since 2010 and required athletes to be on hormone therapy, including testosterone suppression, for at least one year. By the time Leah started competing on the women's team, she'd been on hormone therapy for more than two years. I knew there would be scrutiny against me if I competed as a woman. Did you expect this much scrutiny? I, I did not expect it would reach quite the level that it did. We have a problem with trans women competing against women because they have a baked-in advantage. It's just really a biological reality, and you cannot deny that. Martina Navratilova knows what it takes to be an elite athlete. With 18 Grand Slam singles titles, she's widely considered one of the greatest tennis players of all time. The tennis legend is part of the Women's Sports Policy Working Group, an organization that aims to influence rules on women's sports, specifically how or if to include trans women. What opportunities do you think Leah Thomas's victories take away from cisgender women? The ones that would have been on the podium if Leah was not racing, the ones that would have gone to the national championships if Leah was not on the team. You don't have to dominate, you have to win to take away spots, to take away uh, scholarships, etc. The battle over fairness in women's sports has intensified over the last few years. So far, 18 states have banned or limited transgender kids' participation in school sports. Leah found herself in the center of the fight, especially after she started winning. She rose significantly in the women's rankings, in some cases, number one nationally. There are some who look at the data and suggest you're enjoying a competitive advantage. First of all, there's a lot of factors that go into a race. And the biggest change for me is that I'm happy. And it's also been three years since I last fully competed. And three years of training can also lead to some improvement. Some of the critics would say, oh, you transitioned in order to be successful. Trans people don't transition for athletics. That's, that's not something that I ever considered when I was transitioning. At a meet in December, Leah posted the nation's fastest times in the 200 and 500 freestyle. Her success in the water was met with significant pushback. 16 of her teammates and some of their parents wrote anonymous letters to the NCAA and the Ivy League, arguing Leah posed a threat to women's sports. Trans women competing in women's sports does not threaten women's sports as a whole. Why? Because trans women are a very small minority of all athletes, and we haven't seen any massive uh, wave of trans women dominating. ABC News spoke with one Penn swimmer and her parents who said they don't blame Leah, they just want to protect opportunities for other women. The letter anonymously said that they absolutely supported your right to transition, but they simply think it's unfair for you to compete against cisgender women. You can't go halfway and be like, I support trans women and trans people, but only, only to a certain point, only to a certain extent. Then in January, a new roadblock, the NCAA updating its policy on transgender athletes, putting Leah's season in jeopardy. This morning, the NCAA facing criticism after adopting new rules for transgender athletes, but eventually decided not to impose the new rules mid-season, clearing the way for Leah to go to nationals. She, was pushed over the first she won the 500 freestyle. Thomas wins the NCAA championship. Making history as the first transgender athlete to win a Division I national championship. What was that moment like for you? It was an incredible experience. Immediately afterwards, second and third place finishers Emma Wyant and Erica Sullivan congratulated Leah. But in a show of how political the fight over trans athletes has become, former Vice President Mike Pence and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis openly called Emma Wyant the true winner. The NCAA uh, is basically taking efforts to destroy women's athletics. What would you say 
if you could, in response? I just don't really have anything to say to them. Um, they're transphobic and they're not experts on um, trans people and, and trans bodies. They don't give a damn about women athletes. Uh, they just pretend to care. Uh, it's totally political a football for them and they're winning. Leah went on to take eighth place in the 100 freestyle and tied for fifth in the 200. It's a wire-to-wire -wire win for Taylor Rook. The woman who shared that position, Riley Gaines. I didn't think whenever I first heard of her that, you know, she would swim at Instabilize. I just thought, um, you know, they'll, they'll handle this. Though they tied, Leah was given the fifth place trophy and Riley's was mailed to her. The NCAA has rules for ties and Leah's name was listed first on the score sheet. Riley says an official told her they were doing the results in chronological order. Well, what do you mean chronological order? We just, we tied. And so at this point, I realized, you know, they're doing this to save face. And so not only were women kind of put in this position where we have biological males competing against us, we were put on the back burner for biological males. Riley, an All-American, says it wasn't about the trophy, but how the NCAA handled the situation. I don't think that Leah necessarily did anything wrong. You know, I think she was following the rules that were set for her and placed by the NCAA. What would you say to those folks who say, see, if you just stop swimming, people wouldn't be so angry? I'm, I'm a swimmer at heart. It's what I love to do, and it's a part of who I am. I don't want to... to Give that up. Up next, is Leah Thomas's swimming career over? Are there Olympics in your future? Plus, the debate over whether trans women have a physical advantage in the pool. Biology rules in sports. Stay with us. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.